Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Let's thank him for choosing us before the foundation of the world to be without blame in his sight. Thank him for sealing us with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is the right scepter. For you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Oh, we give you praise. We honor you. We adore you. We celebrate your word. Thank you for the ministry of your word. Oh, thank you for your word. For in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Oh, Makila Friki Dubu Sida Fraka Dimama. We thank you, Lord. Thank you again for this second day of this conference. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, give the Lord a shout. And be seated. Hallelujah. appreciation before getting to the world this afternoon and the first one will be for the multimedia team I mean ov overnight they just they did so much let's appreciate the multimedia team uh, so 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 I mean something just happened to that unit and when we, when we gather for service tomorrow we're going to do a special commendation for them to appreciate them the more. And of course, the music team, thank you very much, instrumentalists. Um, I always tell people this, that in the UK, we don't pay our instrumentalists a dime. There's nobody here collecting a dime. These people just do it for the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. When we're in Nigeria, we paid. <laughs> Paid dearly. <laughs> but it was a major project. You guys, thank you for not giving us that concern. <laughs> These Nigerian guys, I'm sorry. I'm not. Please don't attack me on social media. I beg. <laughs> Luke chapter number four. Let's set the tone for today's teaching. I started sharing a thought yesterday, and I'll just conclude that. And. Um, by the grace of God, our guest minister is here, Pastor Koju, to do justice to what? How many of us were blessed yesterday? <laughs> when I woke up this morning, the first thing I told my wife, I said, as Pastor Koju, started sharing the first scripture. I said, I got, even if this conference ended yesterday night, I, I was sorted. <laughs> you know? And that's me for you. And it has happened to Pastor Koju before. It has happened to me before. I went for uh, meeting, it was uh, in a couple. My wife and I went to Fort Worth, Texas to attend the convention. And I, I, I said, God, I just, there was something bothering my heart. I just needed a word. And guess what? First session, can I co plan and share? I told my wife, I said, conference ended. There was still other session. I said, I, I just got what I came for. That first session yesterday, immediately he opened Isaiah 49. I was seated there, and it just came, boom. And so I started meditating. When I woke up this morning, I told my wife, I said, look at it. And, and we're looking at it. I said, this is it. And I told her what that represents in the scheme of things for me and for us. That is how you receive the word of God. And, and this is important now. So he came to Nazareth, Luke chapter 4, verse 16, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, the only thing we were told that was the custom of our Lord Jesus Christ was what we're about to look into now. What was his custom? He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Reading custom. And it was under the book of prophet Isaiah. I did a series in the church called Isaiahization of Things. There is no way you'll find your destiny without Isaiahizing. 
there is something for you in the book of Isaiah. And because the Lord is our perfect example, he's showing us Isaiah says in here. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all who are in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. As our perfect example is also making us to understand that every day there is a scripture waiting to be fulfilled. And the day you find it is the day it's fulfilled. And somebody must come to what conference, just like I did yesterday. I found the one that was about to be fulfilled in my life. And I'm like, Lord, if this is the only reason why Pastor Boju came. Within five minutes of sharing with us, I just got it. And I declared this morning, I opened the place again. And I said, this scripture is fulfilled in our hearing. Now, if you look at the beginning of this place, the Bible says, then was Jesus led up by the Spirit. So, it's important we understand that the written word is the greatest guide that we have in the scheme of things. And it was clear to him, and as a perfect example, that that operation was not the temptation of Satan. Satan just wanted to take advantage of what God started doing. That operation was being led by the Spirit, right? And that's why the Bible says when he returned, he returned in the power of the Spirit, not in the testimony that he defeated Satan. And to show that it does not matter what you have gained, if you cannot establish it in the word, you have not yet gained it. So that's why immediately he knew that it was an operation of the Spirit. He understood that he was being led by the Spirit. He was returning in the power of the Spirit. And in order to substantiate that, look at what the Lord did. He didn't, he didn't go to town to start telling people that, you know what, I just defeated Satan. I just, you know. In fact, as a matter of fact, in his life and ministry, he never referenced that episode yeah. with Satan. Not once. Did he ever mention it that there was a time I was in the middle that Satan came and I defeated him? He said it was not important. What was important was to say, okay, now that we have gone through this 40 day fasting and prayer, what is the scripture saying about it? Encounters are great, but you see, they cannot be a substitute for scripture. <laughs> and that's why in order to consolidate that gain, the first thing the Lord did as a custom was to find it in Isaiah. So he was looking for it. So it does not matter the revelation you get in World Conference. You must find it. Because look at it. It was not readily evident. It was not readily available. It was a custom of looking into the world. The Bible said he found the place. And when he found it, he said this. All that happened in the wilderness was not just about me and Satan. It was so that this scripture can be fulfilled. And the moment he got to a scripture that was about to be fulfilled, ministry started. You do hear what Pastor Paul just said yesterday. There is no one here that is called to be a local champion. There is a global destiny. Because through you, through your seat, all the families of the earth. So the moment you're on the faith lane, you have signed up for something that is bigger than you. You cannot just father Isaac. You have to father nations. And in most cases, the fatherhood of nations will come before the fatherhood of Isaac. So what you are believing God for, there is a bigger version of it in God. And have you noticed, it was as Abraham was making sure he became the father of nations. Isaac was sorted. He wasn't, <laughs> I mean, God wanted to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Please just listen to this and Pastor Boyd is coming up next to them. But let's go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And God said, how can I do this? I have to tell Abraham. There must be something on the earth. That's how you know that you are getting on the faith lane. That you are the one God is discussing that matter with. And it's got nothing to do with your prayer point. Is God talking to you beyond your prayer point? God wanted to go and destroy Sodom. And God said, out of all the ways to get to Sodom, he didn't even need to leave heaven. But God made sure he passed in front of the home of Abraham. And he passed at a time when they took light. And the Bible says it was hot. It was the heat of the day. 
<laughs> and Abraham was trying to, you know, and God made sure he passed when Abraham was seated out there in the heat of the day. And you know what? Abraham was so secured in this fatherhood of many nations project that he was hosting God and he didn't bring up the Isaac matter. If it were to be some of us, you corner God for the first time. The first thing that will come out of my mouth is that you know I've been believing you for Isaac. <laughs> he didn't, he got, and, uh, can, can God be so comfortable with you that he could heat with you? God started eating. And yet, when God was leaving heaven, he already told Michael, Gabriel, and he said, within the next 30 minutes, Sodom will be history. And I'm sure they were watching. Ah, Sodom is still standing. Where is the boss? And they looked. Lo and behold, the boss was eating chicken with Abraham. And you know what? It was while Abraham was doing that, and he began to intercede for Sodom and all that, it was God that now said, where is Sarah? That means once you become something bigger than the need, the need is something. It was God. It was, not, it was not a prayer point from Abraham. It was not a point of prayer from God. <laughs> and God said, where is Sarah? While he was executing his office as the father of many nations, what God said, I made you. So what this conference is saying, just trying to re-echo what Pastor Paul just said yesterday, is to find out what God has made you. Because what you are believing God for is included in what God has made you in a bigger fashion. So imagine God now said, I will return. It was God himself, according to the time of life. Look at how Isaac was sorted, and Sarah shall have a son. Ah. Same thing also, when Lot was captured, God did not need to come down to Abraham to say, you know you are the father of my nation, go and sort out Lot. But Abraham knew faith works by love. So at times, those people that we consider that, that they hurt us are actually in opening up vistas for us in the realm of the spirit, if you understand the love work. It was as Abraham was executing his role again as another father of nations to rescue Lord, to go and fight five other kings, because these nations were fighting themselves, and God needed somebody to stand as their father. Abraham went there again. So it was not about Lot again. It was about meeting Melchizedek. Had Abraham not gone, imagine he didn't go for that battle. He would not have met one of the greatest human, one of the greatest vessels on the face of the earth. And Mechizedek just said, okay, now this is the point in which we meet you again. You are the possessor of heaven and earth. So in the UK, God has a very great plan for us. We've been saying that over and over and over. The generation of Africans, Nigerians, who are in the UK at such a time as this came for something that is called inheritance. We've said it the opting time, and Pastor Paul, you came yesterday again to re echo it. Are you ready for the word of God this afternoon again? That's just to set the tone. Look at you and say, God has made me a father of many nations. So I'm not a local champion, I'm a global player. There's something God is doing that is bigger than my prayer points. There's something God is doing that once I get into it, plus what God is doing, in addition to my prayer point, everything is sorted. It is called seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And right before my eyes, every other thing is added unto me. God has brought away this weekend one of the finest teachers of the word on heart today. Pastor Paul, he doesn't go by the title apostle, but we all know. <laughs> I mean, it's, look, the seal of his apostleship is clear in the body of Christ. You don't really need the title, and there's nothing wrong with using the title, but I'm saying that there are some who carry that apostolic grace. Because the level of the depth of the word that Pastor Pojo over the years must have communicated to the body of Christ, especially in the last 20 years, is heavily apostolic. There must be an apostolic signature there, which for you to be able to have that level of clarity, access, and depth when it comes to the word of God. And you know one of the weaknesses we have 
as Bible teachers is that you don't readily trust another Bible teacher. You want to check them out. But God saved me from that because the first message of Pastor Kojo that I listened to in 2008, I just got glued. And we've started relationships since then. And it's ever been so gracious, ever been so supporting. So we, on behalf of the Envoy Nation, we want to thank you again for taking the time to come. It shows that you love us. And we do not take that for granted. Not only a man of the word, a man of wisdom. Ah, the kind of wisdom Pastor Kojo has manifested in the body of Christ is rare. Yeah. And you just need to get close to the man. You see what I mean. And he has carried himself so well. He's never been a victim of cliques or clubs. He has maintained the independence of what God has given to him. And independence of his assignment. And interdependence with every other person. He's the greatest bridge between the Father and your ministers in Nigeria. Pastor Paul just sacrificially paved way for most of what we call the way conferences are done and ministry is done in Nigeria today. You will realize that one time or the other, he was the one that started doing certain things before people now started doing the... I remember the first Wabek. He was the first person to bring so many ministers together. Now that's becoming commonplace in Nigeria now that people do, but he has pioneered even from what back to platform. I mean, nobody dared to do platform before then because people will stone you. <laughs> you dare bring, ah, ah, you bring body to come and talk where. <laughs> but the moment Pastor Boy started doing it, everybody started doing it. And he's such it's such a delight to listen to every, any time, any day. A blessing. A blessing. Let us receive <laughs> this afternoon the ministry of Pastor Koji. Oh, your mother. Thank you, thank you. You may all be seated. Father, we thank you once again for the presence of your spirit in this house. Thank you that he's here to glorify Jesus. I ask by the power of that same spirit to grant utterance. I speak as your oracle in simplicity, but with accuracy and power, interpreting the vision of the set man of this house. And your words go forth out of my lips, unhindered by any demonic force, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I don't want to say anything wrong, but... You know, we've gotten so used to the next voice you shall hear is where we've lost the thing of introducing somebody whom you invite in a very personal way from your heart, you know, to, to that. And I want to thank you for that introduction. It's one of the best introductions I've had. That's why, that's why I'm saying, because you're so used to, you know, the next voice you shall hear from this, and then they reel out what you... Is on your website or somewhere, but uh, uh, this is personal and genuine, all right? And uh, Pastor Day is someone I really respect. Now, God sent him here. I'm convinced of that, okay? In fact, I think when they interviewed me about when I went to your new um, location, last night I said, this is clear God sent him here. You don't function the way he's functioning. In fact, someone called me from Nigeria. He said, um, Today, he said, Pastor Dele is the apostle of Leicester now. <laughs> a minister called me and said, ah, he's, he's the apostle there. So it's clear that um, God sent him to this place, and we thank God. The reason why I said that was when he was leaving, I was telling him that ah, all the teachers can't leave Nigeria because we don't have too many Bible teachers again. And um, when you don't have Bible teachers or teaching priests, then errors begin to happen, okay? And excesses begin to come. And some of the excesses, I was telling a friend this morning, some of the excesses we are seeing today in the body of Christ is because some of the teachers in the previous generation got offended and their impact was reduced. And then... All right, I'm sure many people look back today and know they made certain mistakes in some things they are doing, but they can't say it again. 
but they know that this is the unintended consequence of some of the things that we allowed. All right, so it's important. They don't say it, but we know it. So it's important we also position ourselves from that particular place. If you understood what I said, you understand. If you do understand, let us go to the Bible, that scripture here. All right, then. <laughs> All right, so yesterday I want to continue and I want to, because I want to break it to, it's clear to every single person, the ecosystem of God in God's kingdom. So let me just use this picture to start, which we talked about yesterday. Jesus says, I'm the vine, you are a branch, and every single person is a branch or a visible extension of Christ's life. The father is the husband man, or what you call with respect to the gardener. And then the Holy Spirit is the life sap that is within, that flows from the trunk or from the stem right into the branch. And therefore, the Holy Spirit is the one who is the source or the enabler, which means if you, I mean, we know in biology, if you tie a string on a branch, right, very tightly, and life is no longer flowing there, it begins to die. So it's that sap that goes in that causes that uh, branch to be fruitful, that branch to bring forth leaves or to bring forth flowers. And so the Holy Spirit is the one who has been sent by the Father as the executor of everything that was bought uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus said, if you abide in me, now the next step is what the Holy Spirit will flow into you, and what he will do is that he will cause God's words, I want to start with that today, to abide on the inside of you, and by that, you are going to bring forth much fruit. So we started out by saying this. The picture we want to paint is faith, all right, for your destiny. Uh, faith, like Pastor Lee said, you know, Father of Many, faith for the big picture of what God wants to do in your life. Now, anytime, there's a point I want to bring out, there is any movement, which means you toiled all night and caught nothing. It's not about catching fish. It's about entering into something. Are uh, you following what I'm saying here? Yeah. In other words, once there's any movement in your environment, somebody treats you wrongly. There's something God wants to do at that particular point in time. And all of that is just to get your attention. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. All right? Once you check the scriptures, anybody God is going to use, that's why he says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. There's that point of entry that he has into the life of that person. So don't just, this is the point I want to bring, just create, you know, a prayer point and just begin to pray it. Look, you've got to understand that when Paul, Paul was talking to the church at Philippi, he said, I know this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. That is, God causes us always, not sometimes, always, to triumph in Christ Jesus and makes manifest the savour, the fragrance of a knowledge of him, of knowledge of him by us in every place. So always and in every place, you will experience victory. But that victory may not be what you were thinking. Right? Let me give an example here. Remember Paul and Silas, they prayed. The Bible says, and they sang praises. And when they sang praises, the prison door shook and they got out. Do you think Paul didn't think he has found the formula to get out of prison? So the next time he was in prison, you think he didn't pray and praise? He prayed, praise, was waiting, nothing shook. The man was in prison. Later on, he discovered, he said, that listen, I've understood it now, that there is a reason why God allowed me here and kept me here. That if I was on the outside, on Instagram, tweeting, I wouldn't have had access to kings. That this is the only way in which I could have accessed kings. 
because they brought me out of prison there and said, come and stand before Caesar, before these people. And I began to preach and began, you understand what I'm saying? So there's a big picture. You know, I have a friend, his wife used to be in the church. So they got married and he's a pastor, so he went with the wife and, you know, and all that. So one day he was telling this story and his wife got, now the interesting thing is, I think he's in Birmingham now or somewhere. You know, he had a church in Lagos and he now moved to Uganda and started a church there. Long before COVID, in fact, he, he used to preach on telephones, you know, because he had a church in, in Lagos, in Uganda, in Paris, and then they moved again to UK. So he had to be preaching to all the services. He was doing it before COVID even came. But what happened? His wife was working in a big um, oil corporation, and there was a promotion that happened in the corporation, and she wasn't promoted. And she prayed, she did everything, she wasn't promoted. And she got offended. Now, Jesus is called the rock of offense. Anytime you're offended at something, Jesus is in that thing. Be careful how you react. Now, I want you to start, be careful how you react, right? Once, once there's offense, I'm telling you, once there's the stirring of waters. So she said, look, she wants to resign. She's not being adequately rewarded. The husband said, look, relax. Let's just see how this goes. Just calm down. All right? Maybe he was saying it because he was full-time, just started the church. And maybe the salary was coming. Maybe that's what made him say that, look, if you go, hunger me. But, but the point was I just stay. All right? About a month after, she got a call from the vice president of the corporation, the oil company in France. And he said, now there's no way you could have been thinking about this. There's no way you could have prayed this. He said, oil has just been discovered in Uganda, and we won the bid. And um, we would want to send, all right, an African there to lead, because we don't want to look like and make the mistakes we've made in other African countries. So will you like to take up the responsibility of being the head of the, of the legal department of this organization in Uganda? Now, if she was promoted, she would have been out of position. Now, God knows what is coming. You don't know what is coming. Now, you call it on a prayer that was not answered. God calls it prayer that he answered. Now, I want to show you something. So, when Paul prayed with Paul and Silas, and they sang praises, he shook. I'm telling you that once he prayed, Paul said, one instead of singing praises, he knew God was moving. He may not have moved the way he moved the last time. He may not move the way you think he should move. But I want to show you something. He moves. And it's the day they brought Paul out of prison. And he was, he was checking. And suddenly they brought him out of prison and said, now you have, ah, he now told them. He said, listen, now I'm preaching in palaces. I have access to places. When you finished all preaching, all of that, God said, you can now release him. The assignment has been done. Now, so what happened? She got posted. She said two weeks from that point, she was standing before the entire parliament of Uganda addressing them on policies. And she said, where did this start from? I wasn't promoted. Are you following what I'm saying? If they asked her, what was your vision at the beginning of the year? She would never have said. My dear friend who was a pastor just followed because they gave him work permit. Now, what happened was, as his wife was getting jobs in different countries, he was opening churches in different countries. That's what I'm trying. So he became a bishop of five churches on the grounds of the wife. Because once he finished in Uganda, they posted her to Paris. He followed her to Paris. When they finished her, they posted her to England. He followed. So as she was following, doing oil work, he was opening churches. And there was no problem with visa work permits because he was collecting it. So God knows more than you. I, do you get the point I want to say here? I want to teach on He knows more than you. And when you go up to him in prayer, God said, look, if you being evil know how to give good gifts. He said, can if, can, he said look, can a, a son ask the father for an egg 
and, and he'll give him a serpent. For, he says, if you know how to do it, how can somebody pray to me and tell me that I didn't answer the prayer? So let's start with that scripture. I haven't said that. Let's quickly look at the process here. Luke chapter 12 here, verse 29. So I want to put certainty in what you're doing. Seek ye not what you shall eat, what you shall drink, neither be of doubtful mind. For all these things, though the nations of the world seek after. And I'm going to show you in scripture. Anybody you see with a massive breakthrough out there came from a disappointment you didn't hear of. Because death walketh in us that the life of Jesus might be made manifest. Anywhere you see manifestation, somebody experienced something he considered a loss. Anybody you see being honored came from a rejection. Are you following me? For all things do the nations of the world seek after. Your father knows you have need of these things before you ask. Says God knows. But rather seek ye the kingdom, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Somewhere else we saw yesterday, he talked about this, where he said in Luke chapter 11 here, he says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more won't the Father, all right, give the Holy Spirit to them, all right, that ask him. So it's the same thing if we go back to verse 9, all right, it talks about the same thing here. I say unto you, ask, it shall be given, knock, and seek, you will find. And then verse 10 it says that for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that seeketh, findeth. Everyone that knocketh, it shall be opened. And then it says, if a son has bread of, of any of his father, will he give him a stone of fish? Will he give him a serpent? And then it goes on, if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you had them evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So, all right. Now, so once a demand, which means you are a branch, the environment makes a demand. Jesus says, so you go up to God in prayer, and through prayer, you want the life sap there. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yeah? To meet that particular demand. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, look at Isaiah. And verse 14. Isaiah 32, verse 14. It talks about this. It says, Because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, forts and towers shall be dense forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. Now look at verse 15. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness shall be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be counted. In other words, God, in answer to prayer, once you come to him, he says, like we saw yesterday, I will pour forth my spirit into it now. So he pours forth his spirit there in. Now, the Holy Ghost knows exactly, but you don't know. Are you following what I'm saying here? You don't know what God intends to do in that situation at that beginning. You don't. And you, that's why you don't come and meet a Christian and tell the Christian, and I always tell people, if you're in a move of God, things will happen in six months you weren't thinking about prior, if you're in a move of God. You cannot predict a move of God. You can't predict the doors that will be opened up. You cannot. You can't. Because he, he has, he moves, but, 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 okay, because he moves according to his own will, not your own will. That's why the Bible says that, and this is where one of the problems come in receiving remas. What did he tell us? He says, take heed unto it in First Peter, 
as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the day star arises in your heart. Then it says, all right, first Peter 1 there, it says, for every prophecy of scripture, okay, no, go down, all right, verse 19, 19, about 19. Um, every prophecy of scripture is given, all right? Or the prophecy of scripture did not come by the will of man, but came according. All right, we have a more short, so, sorry, second Peter, not first Peter, thanks. All right, take it on as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the day star rise your heart. Next verse, it now says, knowing this first, and we'll get to this, that no prophecy of scripture is of private interpretation. Listen. For prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved. So if you're going to have a move of the spirit, it's not according to your will. This is one of the mistakes that was made in interpretation in word of faith here. Because if I will to have this phone and I now go into the Bible to find a scripture that gives me the phone, I will do private interpretation. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? Because the, when, even when the prophets prophesied, they had to go and find out what they were saying. So it wasn't according to their will, it was according to God's will. Then you say, but ah, we can't leave this thing to God. Though. How do we know whether God will do what will be in our best interest, my friend. Listen very well to me. You say, am I sure? Are you the creator of marriage? Are you the one that says it's not good for man to be alone? Marriage is God that started it. Listen, if it wasn't for God, we would love the men on the earth and we would know that there would even be a woman. I, I hope you know. It would just be dropping men every time. Just come and form men. I'm gonna... So, you say, I'm not sure whether God wants to marry. He started marriage. He said, I'm not sure whether God wants me to, to increase. He started increase. He was the one that said, be fruitful, multiply. Yeah. Healing is God that started healing. Or else people will be sick. You won't know there's supposed to be healing. It's, you see, all these blessings you're talking about is God that started it. Growth, it is God that came out and started prophesying. Numbers is God that started saying. And the number and the number is God that began to describe blessings in that particular way. It's God that started being global. Listen, everybody will have just been calm. It's God that started all these things. You are calling blessings. It's God that started. Are you telling me that jo Joseph, when he had that dream, he understood where he was going? What Joseph was telling his brothers was, this is my father's business. I'm the one going to be in charge. All of you will bow to me. That's why they killed him. That's why they wanted to kill him because they, that was the fight. It's God that was thinking global and saying there's going. He didn't have an idea. So what I'm trying to tell you is give God room. You don't have an idea at the beginning what God wants to do. You don't. You may have felt that. So when Peter told on, I didn't catch anything. He didn't know that God was in it. When he caught fish, abundant, is then he realized that this thing wasn't even about fish. It was about catching men. He woke up that morning not knowing that by evening I'll be an apostle to nations. When there's a visitation, God begins to do things that you didn't even conceive. And I tell people, look, let God make an offer first. I mean, you can come out and say, this is my vision, this is my vision, this is my vision, my vision, my vision, my vision. <laughs> Just wait. You went out, got to the airport, you were going somewhere. Suddenly they said, that's Elon Musk. He looked, oh, oh, you are here. You just put out a tweet. Tomorrow morning, you just get a call. Elon Musk saw your tweet. He's really interested in meeting you. And please, he'll be sending a private, you for Elon Musk, liar. You go, please, who is Elon Musk? Which Elon Musk? Please, go away. Who do you want to fool? You'll drop the phone. They'll call you back. Elon Musk, yes. I don't care what your vision is in Leicester. <laughs> 
Next, even if you testified yesterday, what God moved and did, you will come back tomorrow and you will say, God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Then you say, I read that, you know, I read, look, listen, listen. God can show you scriptures, but God can do things, then when he has done it, you will understand scripture. You understand what I'm saying here? Something has happened, then you went to read the Bible and say, this is that. (laughs) So give him room. So what do you do? Because what he wants to do is to pour out his spirit. That's what he wants. Look at what he says. In, this is the culture of the kingdom now. Romans 12. So if anything happens in your environment, just go and give God praise. Anything negative, just say, Father, I thank you. Ah, just worship God. You have come. I've been waiting for you. Ah, I have been waiting. They said I will never make it. Ah, God, thank you. I've been waiting. I've been hearing people's stories of them being rejected. Nobody has rejected. Finally. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Finally now. So, he says this. Quickly. Luke 12 here, verse 32 here. So he says, I want to show something he wants you to do. Luke 12, 32. So he says, fear not, it's your father's good pleasure. He wants to give you kingdom. Are are you following what I'm saying? Kingdom is government, authority. Now, this is what he says you should do. Next verse. He says, self, he says, the first thing is not to come and meet me. What I will eat, what I will wear. He says, take from what you have and start helping people. Take your focus off yourself onto others. Are you following what I'm saying here? Listen, I'm telling you how God operates. Look, let's just say someone just lost a job. Jesus' first point of contact is not you get another job. It's somebody coming to ask you for help when you are in need. I'm saying Jesus now. I'm not talking Jesus now. This is not positive thinking. Jesus. Because they toiled all night. They caught nothing. Can you imagine you are mending your nets frustrated? Then Jesus comes and says, lend me. That's how he starts. Lend me your what? Boat. Didn't you see when any prophets would get there? What would they say? What do you have in? The miracle doesn't start by you receiving. The miracle starts by you giving. Are you getting the orientation? Because when the thing comes, you can't be self-centered. So he has to break that in you. So the starting point. Ah, well, I'm out of job. Where can I volunteer for free and use my talent to help people? Where, that's how it starts. Uh, look, I'm telling you God's pattern of doing things. Look, I, I mean, I mean, well... <laughs> You know when we talk kingdom, kingdom is kingdom. God raised Pharaoh for a purpose, that's kingdom. There's church, there's kingdom. Do you, you get what I'm saying here? There's church. Church people don't understand kingdom. Kingdom is outside, kingdom is kingdom. Uh-huh. You, are you following what I'm saying here? Uh-huh. So, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was raised. In fact, Daniel 4 was Nebuchadnezzar's epistle to us. Daniel didn't write ne- Daniel 4. Nebuchadnezzar wrote it. And Paul followed the pattern of Nebuchadnezzar. Go and read it now. Put Daniel 4. You will see that that's how Paul too started writing. Look, put Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. He says, I, Nebuchadnezzar. Look, look at what he says. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar the king, to all people, nations, languages that dwell in the earth. Peace. That's Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? This is how Paul was writing. That's how Nebuchadnezzar was Peace. Be unto you. He now went on. I want you to say this. I thought it good to show <laughs> the signs, wonders, the high God wrought towards me. That means even the humiliation, he says, God was a sign and a wonder. 
It was a manifestation of divine power in him for his... Do you get what I'm saying here? That he was seven years in the wilderness. He said, what a blessing it was. That's why Paul could come out. <laughs> People that teach uh, Paul, they don't understand it. So Paul himself came out. He said, lest I should be exalted above measure. Pride was coming in. A messenger of Satan was given unto me. He said, pride entered. So because when I came into the meetings, I was looking at Peter and the rest of them like they didn't know what they were preaching. God said, hey, wait. <laughs> so when he went to meet God, God said, so he understood. So the first thing is take from what you have, which means don't start thinking who can give to me. Start thinking that's why when people get into, that's how you know they've missed it. They get into trouble and say, I stopped coming to church. I can't stop because I have issues. You know, I had a friend in this country many years ago. This was in the 90s, many years ago. He was going through some struggle in his personal life. Somebody got a placement in Rema Bible School back there, Kenneth Hagin Bible School, and he had a fellowship. He called him and said to him, Take this fellowship where I was in prayer. God said to me that you should be the one to lead this fellowship. That fellowship then grew back then. It's no longer like that. To become the third biggest church in London at one point. He gave it to him. He said, I have issues going on, my own personal struggle. Right? Let me settle myself before I come and listen. It's just, like, it's just like Peter saying, look, I have my personal struggle. I haven't caught anything. Let me say, to, do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. It is when you're under pressure that you should give yourself yes, more to service. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you're under pressure, it's not when you say nobody has called me, it's when you call people. Yes, Didn't you see Paul in jail comforting the people outside that you faint not at my tribulation? <laughs> are you that are you the one that you'll be fainting? You are the one telling us we shouldn't faint at your tribulation. We are the one, you are the one that should be tired. He says, faint not. He was encouraging them. Do you think he didn't feel that he was locked up? That's when you should put out a tweet, lift up your head. God, do you get what I'm saying here? That's when you should do a video and talk to people and say, look, you can succeed. If anybody understood this, Dr. Robert, he said when they lost their son in a plane crash, he told his wife, this is a time to plant a seed. He said, get the cameras, get the cameras. We must record the program and encourage people. He said, we were crying when we got on set and said, listen, God is faithful. God, that people, when they saw it, said, you mean you're experiencing this and you can tell us this. They, you know, when you have little problems, you see someone with a major problem, you will forget your own. That was my problem. <laughs> Somebody lost their child. What's my own? I, the guitar string broke. Please leave. <laughs> All right? You, can, you, you forget about that. So it's, do you get what I'm saying here? Worship God. Turn it to worship of God and begin to help other people. So he says, it's your father's good pleasure to give the kingdom. Let's go on here. And then he talks about, father's good pleasure the kingdom. Then he says this. Provide, <laughs> provide yourselves bags that wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Where no thief, moth corrupt. Yeah. Next verse. I want to show what that treasure is. For where your treasure is, there your heart to be. And then he says, let your loins be guarded about and your light burning. And you are waiting for when Jesus will come and knock. Because he will come. Now, so what's he saying? Now, once the Spirit of God comes in, the first thing the Spirit of God does is let there be what? Light. He's a spirit of light. The Bible says God it says every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes from the father of lights. That term father of lights means the father who gives it in the form of light. Now, is the entrance of the words that giveth what? Life. 
Now, remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, the flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickens. He said, the words I speak, the words that are remas, he said, they are what? Spirit and life. In other words, once the Holy Spirit comes to you, remember it's the life sap. If you abide in me and my words, what he wants to give you first are the appropriate, and I explain this, remas for that particular situation. So he wants to reveal to that particular person what's God's mind on it. Now, the person who can receive that revelation is not one who, if, if, if you are trying to force the revelation, which means you want it to say what you want it to say, you will miss it. So God is saying, look, we need to crack you. Take, the, your, take yourself, don't start thinking myself. That's why he says, begin to get. He says, you're going to get a treasure. What's that treasure that cannot fail? The Bible says, God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. I shined in your heart to give the light of the knowledge of his glory, which is found in the face of Jesus. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Remember, it says, that scripture we read, it says, take heed as a light that does what? Shines in a dark place. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is a prophet, which means what God shows you is prophetic. He's saying this is what is going to come out of this situation. Are you following what I'm saying here? I'm saying you sit down. Listen to this. And as you're looking at the scripture, you are no longer reading the Bible. The Holy Spirit is, the scripture is reading your life. You find scriptures that describe what just happened to you and what is going to happen. Now, let me put it this way. Erema, listen to this, is a specific scripture or portion of scriptures that the Holy Spirit reveals to you in a time of need, which means he quickens some scriptures in a particular time of need, or it quickens it, so that light comes and you have joy. So he quickens it, which means you see a scripture. Now, let me say something about a rema. Because many people come and tell me, I received a rema from God. Listen to what I'm about to say. Don't forget this. I saw a rema. I stood on the word of God. Listen. The word of God works. What many people call the word of God is not the rema. Let me tell you why I'm saying. I just gave you one of the conditions. It's of no private interpretation. Listen. The best example I have, if somebody is believing for healing, and you say, where's the rema? And they're telling you, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Popular scriptures, they didn't get a rema. Once a rema comes, no human being will have shared that part that God shows you in that way to you in your life. Is either a scripture, hear what I'm saying, that you had never seen before or you had never seen it that way before. No human being will have given it to you. Let me repeat what I'm saying. I'm saying, look, listen. If I teach this now, I come back in three weeks and you come to say, Pastor, what you shared with me is a testimony. Let me tell you what happened. And you start Listen, when you finish sharing it, I will be blessed from your own sharing more than you that shared it. Even though I'm the one that was, do you get what I'm saying here? Which means as you start sharing, because you've had a personal encounter with the Holy Ghost, I will see things. There's no church member of us that gets a result that I don't learn from when they share the testimony. Ah, come on. Ah, come on. In fact, one finish sharing, I, I said to myself, I said, I need to go and be listening to my own messages. I'm very serious here. You know why he told me? He took me to a block of flats, 33 floors, Eco Atlantic. He built it. He showed the scripture. He said, this is the confession of church. I looked at him. <laughs> and on the way there, they showed me, and if you know Lagos, in Eco Atlantic, most expensive, he showed me three other ones who was built in 35. He said, it is, he said, I came into this church. I said, you can't remember. I came to see you in 2008. I said, you should mentor me. I said, you can't remember. He said, <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, in fact, the staff came and said, he's a pastor here. Once you finish on Sunday, he comes on Monday, workers, uh, he calls all the staff, this is what a pastor share. shares it. That's what we are using. I said, that. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's why the woman with the issue of blood had a rema. Even Jesus wasn't aware. Rema is not Joko. I wasn't aware. If she had told Peter about the rema, Peter would have talked out because Peter didn't have that rema. Even when Jesus said, somebody touch me. Peter said, what are you saying? Look at all the people. I hope you understand what Rema is. The experience of a person can never discourage a person with Rema. You hear what I said? It is, do you hear what I said here? Nothing to do with it. Because God has revealed something to you that for the first time you have seen it that way. That's why when she was going to, to, to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, there were sick people touching Jesus. They weren't getting healed. She didn't flinch. What she said is, if I, <laughs> there's a woman, this is the most perfect example I give, I'll give here, I, that I heard of a rumor. A woman, they were going to cut off her foot. She had some, it was, it was, it was contaminated, but they had to cut it off. It was infected. And she was confessing for her healing. She went to God in prayer. One day, this is in a book written by a woman, Lily Oman, she said the woman just came down because they had a healing place where people believe in God. She just came down and her countenance had changed. You see, when you have a rema, you know the interpretation of a thing and the boldness of your countenance changes. Came down. She said, I'm healed. I said, what do you mean you're healed? I said, the woman put it my foot. I said, God spoke to me, gave me his word. I got my rema. It wasn't a healing scripture. You, nobody has ever taught that scripture on healing. What was the scripture? The, it's in Proverbs. The Lord shall be your confidence, and he shall not suffer your foot to be taken. <laughs> you see, when somebody shows you to do like, look at, it's true. <laughs> do you understand what we're saying here? Don't miss this, the power of Rema. And for you to get it, you can't want to force what you think God should do. And then you go to the Bible and try to squint it out. That's where the problem starts. You open yourself to God. Now, the latter part, listen to this, of the definition of a rema is that it is a scripture quickened to you by the Holy Spirit in a time of need. The prerequisite being the regular storage of the mind with scripture. In other words, you can memorize scripture, it is very good. But it's not rema. But the scriptures you have memorized, this is what happens. When a situation comes and you go to the whole and you are praying and God supplies the spirit. You know what the spirit does? He begins to search. The avenue of all the scriptures you know. Not all the scriptures that are in the Bible. All the scriptures you know. And then he's going around to look for which one he can take from the 300 scriptures you know from the childhood there. From He's looking at everything. If you are not someone who reads the Bible, blank. That prayer goes unanswered. It goes again, it goes blank. But if you've been reading the scriptures as the Holy Ghost after one hour and your mind gets silent, pow, pow, you just put the scriptures out. You have the sword. Now, if you're not reading the Bible, this is why we have to teach people, read your Bible. You have to. Because you don't know the day. Do you get what we're saying? So when it goes blank, blank, ah, blank, blank, blank. He says, this one in those second base here. Get him to church. Get her to church. If people are interceding for you, then what happens is that Pastor Dele begins to preach. Then he stops. He says, I know I'm digressing. Are you following what I'm saying here? Because the Holy Ghost starts pulling to get a rema. I know I'm digressing, but you know this. Says it. Pam! He says you got it. Are you following what I'm saying here? All right? There's one day I was praying. Sorry. God told me to do something. I said, God, I've not seen anybody do it. So I haven't seen anybody do it. This is what you're asking me to do. I've not seen anybody. Next thing, somebody, something happened somewhere. So I helped the person in church. 
person came and said, I want to give you a book as a gift for th- to say thank you. I opened it. was a book by Bishop Butler. I opened it, page one, page two. I never read that book beyond that page. I just read something there. Pwam. I closed it. I said, thank you, Father. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That is the treasure you have in earthen vessel. Yeah. That the excellence of the power will be of God and not of us. That God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, it is the light appropriate for that darkness. Yes, sir. You get what I'm saying here? So it says take it as a light that shines in a dark place. It shines in the context of that darkness. So let me just say this here. Let me say this here. Because I didn't say that I was going to, maybe I was going to start preaching to Nigerians or Africans who relocate. Let me tell you this, because I believe it's prophetic. <laughs> you know, when I was coming, I was going to Canada first. Bishop Waleoke was on the flight with him, president of. So he said, ah, where are you going? I said, Canada. Ah! They said that people have been moving to different countries. Ah, I said, God has a plan. He said, we saw this in the 90s. God has a what? A plan. No, no, no. no okay. All right, okay. He said, God has a plan. He says, God has a plan. Now, listen to what I'm saying. You may have come with no rema. You just came. Condition costs you to come. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, we came. All right? So, and I want you to spend the next one month seeking his face to get why you are here. Now, when you get a rema, See, remas can be so deep that they are transgenerational. In fact, your grandchildren's future is in what God told you. Because when Abraham received rema, he says 400 years. So it can be something if Jesus tarries that will last 200 years. That you write in a book, and if the Lord tarries the time you give, this is will, we give you house, but we are giving you the remas. Now, someone says, but if I just came, isn't it a mistake? No, no, wait, wait, wait. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. So when Jesus said, he said, are you saying we should go back into our mother's womb and come back? He said, no, you must be born again. So you don't have to return to come back. You can be what? Born again. Do you get what I'm saying here? Because if you understand kingdom, not church, God in his sovereignty will not have allowed you here if, if, if there was no possibility of your prophetic plan fulfilling, they wouldn't have given you visa. I guarantee you, God will block it. <laughs> All right? So the Holy Spirit grants Rema quickly. So what happens next? Now, there are two stages I want to discuss. Once the light comes... And Revelation, you are excited. God has spoken. Put up Second Corinthians verse six. God has spoken. God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. And you know, before God said, "Let there be light," you remember the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. And God said, "Let there be what light." So what He does with you, He pours forth His Spirit. The Spirit is hovering there, and light comes. The entrance of his words gives what? Light. So it caused light to give knowledge of the glory of God. That scripture means, face of just means what Jesus is thinking about that situation. When he says, seek my face, means seek my inward thoughts. What I am what? Thinking. Do you get what I'm saying here? Now, you may know my will, but you may not know my thoughts. Do you get what I'm saying? So, for example... 
I can, stay, I can stand here now and I'm preaching. And let us assume. I just want to show you. That's why the Bible says no man knows the things of a man except the spirit of that man. No man knows the, the word things, it means the thoughts. I can, I can look at this gentleman, I'm just preaching, and you think I'm just preaching. But let's assume that I went to see my brother where he was living, and he was wearing a black sweater and a white shirt like this. When I look at him, a thought comes to me, ah, he's dressed like, nobody can know I'm doing that. You can't know that. Do you get what I'm saying? There's no way in this world you can know it. I can look at somebody's sneakers and say, ah, that's the sneakers I saw two years ago. I wanted to buy, I didn't buy. You, you, there's no way you, you just say pastor is preaching. You won't know that those thoughts are coming. Do you get what I'm saying here? So it's the, only the Holy Spirit can let you know what Jesus is thinking. That's, this is what I am what? Thinking. Now, once you know what he's thinking, that's the treasure that can't fail. We have in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Now you're happy. Then exchange comes now. The next thing. Listen to this. We are troubled. Listen to what I'm saying here. Pre look, listen. And I need to say this. They asked Warren Buffett and I heard him say this and Bill Gates asked him, he said, you are sharing so much secrets about your business, your life. Don't you think somebody else will take this thing and go and do all these things and you'll lose? He said, he said, I'm sharing it because I know. People are so interested in quick fixes, instantaneous results, that they won't practice this thing that is a process. He said it. He said all these things I'm sharing, they won't do it. Why? Because it's a process. Some of it will take years before they begin. He said they are not interested. Everybody goes to go and meet somebody. What's the secret to your success? All they want is tell us one thing to do. Yeah. Give us the silver bullet. Give us, you know, just one thing. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. And in Christianity, we create. It is not correct. The impression that... It's just one thing that happened that made somebody. It is not so. It's not so. Another chap, they asked him, he said, he was saying this. He said, I went to Stanford. He said, most people that go there in my class don't succeed as entrepreneurs. He said, because they have high expectation. <laughs> so what do you mean? He said, they don't have residence. He said, they came from rich homes. They've never su suffered anything that will make them build resilience inside. He said to succeed, it takes resilience more than your IQ. Yes. Resilience there, stay in power. It is with faith and patience you inherit the promise. So he says we are troubled. People believe that once I've heard from heaven, no trouble should come. Do you know what Christians believe is that because of the finished work of Jesus, we should be exempted from tests. The finished work of Jesus means you will come out victorious, not that you will be exempted. The finished work of Jesus does not mean that they can't fire you, they can fire you. What it means is that the outcome of it, you will thank God that they did what? Fired you. Are you following what I'm saying? Because you have the favor of God doesn't mean some people cannot decide last minute we're walking out of your life. What the finished world guarantees, that's why Jesus said, he didn't say in this world you may have tribulation. He said in this world you shall. He said you will have the tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. Finish rock doesn't mean that if I refuse to bow down to the idol, God knows. They won't, let me, they won't throw me into the flames. God will stop them. Uh, do you get what I'm saying? So by the time they throw me into the flames, they say, what did God do? Where's God? Where's God? 
Daniel, what they told the king, he says, king, we will not be careful to answer in this matter. If it's between death and bowing down, we will choose death. However, we are telling you, through us, our God will deliver us. Finished work doesn't mean that they won't plot in the office and throw you to lions. It means when they finish throwing you, the lions won't eat you up. So don't start wondering, why did this happen? Are you following what I'm saying? I'm saying this is where Christians lose. They get trouble. How can they get trouble? How can? Uh, you understand what I'm saying? How can this happen? You know, now we open campus everywhere. So some of the pastors now, they are pastoring, so they know as, as it is. Yeah. One of them said, Pastor, you, they need to give you flowers. I didn't know this is what you are going through. Uh-huh. I will laugh when they tell me the problem. I say, you don't know what I say. I, then they started coming. You will go through things. He says, we are troubled on every side. Not even here, every. He says, yet you don't see we are distressed. That's what Revelation does. You won't even know the trouble we are going through. He says we are perplexed. You know, when you're perplexed, when people do things and you say, wait a minute, give me a chair, let me see that, I can't stand here. You are what? Perplexed. He said, but not in despair. There's nothing like, oh, it's over. I'm just gonna say, it's not working. I'm, do you get what I'm saying? He says persecuted, but not forsaken. We still see. Even though Joseph was persecuted, thrown, you still saw that he wasn't forsaken by God. The finger of God. What, do you get what we're saying? He says, cast down, but not destroyed. Now, this is where we get to. Always bearing about in the body the dying of our Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. In other words, any manifestation you see in somebody, It comes from they were cast down from somewhere. They were troubled. Do you get what I'm saying here? You are looking at the crown, but you've forgotten the cross. Anybody that you see that is so loving, so forgiving, is because they've gone through things, unkind remarks, betrayals. Now, it says this. For we which live are always what? Delivered. Which means we always experience this. That the life also of Jesus may be made what? Manifest in our... In other words, this is the way what is inside you will come out. This is how manifestation happens. You'll go through the valley of the shadow of death. You get what I'm saying here? So don't reject these things. Embrace them. When it happens, thank God. Then you can't be defeated. Look at what he says. So then death walketh in us, but life in you. You know what Paul was saying? He said, if I preach a message, and life entered into you, it came as a result of death that walked inside me. This is why I always tell people that talk doctrine error. If you listen to it, there is no story behind that doctrine of how it improved their own personal lives, of how they struggled and God revealed something. It's always from notebook from a book, not from their lives. He says, when we preach, he says, if somebody preaches and you leave the place and you are full of joy, it comes from experience of sorrow in that person's life. If they preach and wisdom is imparted, it's coming from their own mistakes. Are you following what I'm saying here? There is no life on the outside without death walking inside. Now, here's the point. We having the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore, have we spoken, therefore, believe, therefore. In other words, this is what happens to that person, and this is what you must get. When death happens, at that moment, they exchange death with life. In other words, once they say set back, they open their mouth. I say, greater is he that is in me, that is in that is inside. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Once something happens, they exchange. Now, where people fail is that when that thing happens, even though they have revelation, they keep quiet. And they're saying, why did this happen? And they carry it until that small event becomes a stronghold in their mind. 
They are depressed. They are discouraged. Somebody else gets up and exchanges it, which means you get up and start speaking words and speaking words until that thing lifts. All of the private confession you make is for this moment to exchange death with life. Somebody told me something, something happened to her. She said, we got an investment, or well, a grant. And the grant we won it, it was $30 million. And listen to what I'm saying. She said, after we won it, next we were rejoicing. Next thing they came to meet us and said, well, we've changed our mind. It's now $7 million. That's death works in you. She said, she told all her staff, God is working all things together for our good. That is the exchange of death with what? Life. Life. If you don't make that exchange, that thing remains permanent. I always share this in pastor's conference. If you say you have any, I mean, you went to pray and fast. Listen to this. And God, our church will be 200. God will receive it. God heard. You saw the rema. You come to church. You are 25 people. That is death walking. Now you don't go home with that heaviness. And then you eat with that heaviness. Are you following what I'm saying? How many of you have football clubs? Lester, you are not, okay, I know Lester. But you have football. You know when your club loses, you know that's death walking. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Which means something happens and death walks in you. I mean, I say this, but I say this with all seriousness. It's my club, but I say it with all seriousness, <laughs> which is Liverpool. But I say it with Now, the reason I say it with seriousness, I learn from everything. And, and Jürgen Klopp is an evangelical. He's a Christian. He said this, and I forgot, I just saw him say it in passing. But you have to be spiritual to get it. He said when we played Real Madrid in one of the finals of the Champions League and we lost. He said when we got back, he said I called my assistant and we composed the song and sang. We will be back here next year and we'll win this cup. The next year, you have to answer death with life. Don't sit down with that death and be carrying it around. We're about to get to the last one. Put on the garment of place for the spirit of heaviness. That thing has brought heaviness. Wear the garment of place. It's with words you wear it. The first, listen, if you lose this battle, you can't get to manifestation. This is a, listen, this replacement here doesn't change anything on the outside at the beginning, but changes you. Somebody is believing God for healing, went to the doctor, they said, look, it's deteriorating. Exchange that death with life. Many will carry that death. I'm going to mention, please pray for me. Is that death that he's saying pray for me? Are you following what I'm saying? That's why he says, look at the next verse. He says, knowing that he which raised the Lord Jesus shall raise us up. Which means when we are cast down with the spirit of faith, we were raised back. So that pastor leaves that place and goes home and he's sad. He should hold the confession of what he saw in prayer until he's raised out of that depressed state. So what happens? The next Sunday, I guarantee you, the number decreases again. I've been in this thing for some time. Then God says, do again what you did. He raises it back up. He goes again. The number seven people mock him. He looks at it. He raises himself back. You know when manifestation is about to occur? When the number hasn't changed, but he has changed. He doesn't feel anything again. 
Not that he has lost a sense of responsibility, but he has entered into rest. You cannot get manifestation when there's anxiety. Are you following what I'm saying here? You are at rest here. Which means nothing has changed, but you are calm. What you're seeing with your eyes is no longer affecting your heart. What people say is no longer something has died. You know, a dead man can't get angry. So you are very stupid, mad. He's dead. Non-responsive. That's what Jesus was saying. He says, we mourned for you, you did not. We, you did this, we sang for you, you did. He says, what kind of a, he was dead to externalities. You've come to a place of liberty, which means you can make yourself feel any way you want to feel with the words that come out of your lips at any time. Nobody is responsible. Again, this is a mental health issue for even your mental health. So you know you can sit in your room and change. He says, thy words were found. I did eat them. They became the joy and the rejoicing. Which means I'm not rejoicing because of anything. I'm rejoicing because of the word. Now, if you don't make that exchange, look, and this is how God works. That's why Jesus was made a little lower for exaltation. This is how it works. If you're on level 50, God wants to take you to level 70, he will drop you to 35, then 70. When he drops, he says, this, this, I'm telling you what defeats Christians. They want to go from 50 to 70, 70 to, do you get what I'm saying? He drops you. Then you go from that, then with those words, you pull yourself out, you go to 70. When it's time to get to 150, he drops you to 60. Then you pull Some important said, well, we were ready for the business. The investors, and then one just says, we are not doing again. And it's death that walked on the inside. So what you do is with the spirit of faith, with your words alone in your room, pacing the floor, you exchange that death with life. And you put on the garment of praise. You come out of that place with joy. Then you get to the final thing. This confession doesn't change anything on the outside yet. It changes you. You must change. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, what is happening is that that death is actually clearing the way for what God wants to bring in. Because you can't have, it takes away the first to establish the second. You know, there was this man, I didn't even know he was, but he was just, he does a television program in America. And only he said, he said, I learned something. He said, I was telling him I had a broken down car in, on, in the park. He was, was living with his mother in, 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 no, in the compound there. He said, out, out there. He says, and I was praying, God, I have a new car. God is going to give me a new car. This car is broken. I keep saying, God, I'm believing for a new car. He said one day, the mother said, no, listen, listen. No new car is coming so long as that car is parked there. Get rid of that car before any new one can come. He said he took the car, got rid of it, took it to the mechanic shop. Two weeks after, he said he realized that that one was blocking what was coming. That's why death has to walk. Look, someone said, somebody uh, who were dating for six years, they walked out of my life. If they can walk out, it's because God didn't want it. You have to know God's sovereignty. You said, but there was pain. God, listen to what I'm saying. God took his son through pain yes. for salvation. Yes. He looks at you and says, what is coming? The pain that you will have experienced if you are with this person, you will know that this one is not pain. And the sufferings now are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is coming. So let me tell you this. When I was on campus, I was living in a fellowship. Let me tell you this. There was two people that were dating inside the fellowship. They were ranking people in the fellowship. This lady did everything. Well, 
I, I, I mean, I had known him from childhood. So next thing I just heard he was getting married. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, this world can be, you know, you just hear somebody's getting married. So we are rejoicing only to find out. In fact, there was a case in the fellowship where the friends of the bride, it was at the, at the engagement, they realized it was another lady. They, you, you, can, you can understand that pain. She went for the wedding. Listen to what I'm saying. She went for the guy's wedding. The father was a, the guy's father was a Supreme Court judge in Nigeria, a strong man. He, when he saw her in the congregation, he left where he was and went to meet her. He said, you did this for my son. After what he did, he said, wherever you are getting married in this world, I will come for it. Listen to what happened. I sat down one day in my house. I put on television. Pastor Tunde Bakari was preaching. I know he can be dramatic. And he was dancing, singing, that the stew that God, when God cooks the stew, he was singing a Yoruba song, all the meat and everything. I said, what does he say? He said, my daughter, her husband, she's getting married too. He started calling everything. He just called her out. It was that lady. When you see the man and you see what you lost, <laughs> you know that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared. Now, here's my point. You say, why do some people don't cross? Because they don't exchange that death for life. They are still mourning for Saul instead of anointing David. For her to have gone for that wedding, it means that that thing had left her. But if you are carrying death on the inside, you can't get that manifestation because somebody else is still living where that person should come in. Do you get what we're saying? You can't be regretting. Say, well, somebody lied on me. Lied on me in the job. That's why I lost the job. Listen, in God's sovereignty, he allowed it. We need to understand God's sovereignty. Not all things that will happen to Christians will be nice. There's some things that God in his sovereignty will allow. And they are painful. Because when they threw Jonah out of the boat, look, those guys were nice. Carry him. Fling. Two, three, four. Gone. As far as those guys were concerned, Jonah died. Because they didn't see him again. And those guys went on with their lives. And Jonah could have been better with these guys. Do you know, he would will, he will have died there if he was thinking about the way they threw him out. Somebody says, it's the way they sacked me. Leave the way they sacked you. End time to what God is preparing. So I'm saying, they, if they did it the right way, what's the right way? Someone said, he broke up the wrong way. He did it by text message. He broke up. Leave it. What is the right way? You should come and sit down. I, that, Look, leave that. You say, what is paining me is the way they did it. It's not the way they did it. Leave it. Are you following what I'm saying? Death works. I mean, one of our pastors, I just imagine that. She gave me the same pastor. I said, what? She wrote the pastor. I'm feeling pain. I said, what? She said, um, Two of very faithful people in the church. I said they are relocated to Canada. I said, what? I said, this is painful. Ah. I said, when you left, elect- <laughs> so you now know how it is. <laughs> I said, he just came and met me one day. He said, Pastor, he said, what is it? You are going to be. He said, I'm going. I said, you will replace that thing with life. And then when you see new people that come into that space, you will know that it was God's will. No matter how painful it felt. It was actually the will of God. The best, in fact, let me tell you this. Someone say, how do I know what to eat that is right? Say, if it tastes sweet, it's not right for you. Do you get what I'm saying? (laughs) That means things that will help you the most may not feel good. Make that exchange at that particular point. Don't sleep on it. 
Once you get home, shut the door and exchange it. Shut the door and exchange it. Shut the door and exchange it. If you say, well, I saw the guy, I saw him crossing with another lady over there, exchange it. Do it again, exchange it. Once you get to a point where when you see him, it doesn't matter again, then you have now stepped to the place of manifestation. Now, what's the final thing for manifestation? And once you practice this, this sets the timing of God. God's move in your life. Next verse there, it says, the next verse, it says, for all things are for your sake, that the abundance of grace might through the thanksgiving of me. You now begin to praise God. Now, you exchange and start thanking God for the revelation fulfilled. Do you get what I'm saying here? You get what I'm saying here? So let's say this person is believing for 500, he sees 67. He exchanges, then thanks God for the 500. That's how grace comes for God's glory to be made manifest. Uh, You understand this? Look, thanksgiving is the most advanced form of confession, thanksgiving and praise, because it is the acknowledgement of the receipt of that part, which means I'm acknowledging God that is mine. Which means you are going to God and acknowledging it. Now, this is what we've got to understand because of time. Let me point here. Once you start praising God, put Isaiah 42. I like what you said. Yeah, Isaiah, everything. All right. It's the truth, though. If you are looking for a rema, just start from Isaiah 40. I'm sorry, you will see it. You, it's Isaiah, you will see it. If it's a personal problem that came as a result of a mistake, go to Sam. You'll see it. David will tell you. (laughs) Because David went through all kinds of things so that God could have somebody who would download the remas for others to use. There's no trouble you go through. You haven't seen what David saw. You haven't. Adultery's mother. You haven't done your son comes to dethrone you. You haven't done. Another son is planning. You haven't done. That somebody hired you and wants to kill you. (laughs) They are throwing spears. You haven't seen. (laughs) No one day I was meditating and I heard the spirit say, God said to me in meditation, said I miss David on the earth. He said, there's nothing you want to do to David. He will respond with worship and thanksgiving. He said, somebody prayed to me and fasted, and the child died. And not one complaint came out. He changed his raiment and went into worship. He said, I don't see it on the earth again. You can't even train anybody. This is what he's saying. You touch them for training, they start complaining. It's happening today. I mean, as I was saying it yesterday in church, a pastor disciplines somebody in social media. See, let me tell you, I was in the church. You see what I'm saying? Local and younger generation must understand this. Hear me. I was listening to the most successful prime t- successful journalist on prime time in America, and he said something. He said, these young guys coming can't catch up with me. He said, because before I got to this stage and I sat here, before the whole of America, I went to report in war fronts. Bullets were flying while I was reporting. He said, they don't do that again. He said, it's a summation of all of that you see when I'm presenting for 45 minutes here. He said, everything I've experienced is coming out. See, I was in the church. The pastor would preach. One time something happened in that church. The pastor got up. Tore my friends in the fellowship. Said they must close down the fellowship. Tore us. He called them fornicators, everything. I was sitting listening to him. After the message, he signaled to me, follow me. Took me into his kitchen. He said, I stabbed your friends in their chest because I saw you in the congregation. I knew you would go and tell them. I stabbed them. He said, you understand? I said, yes, I went. The next Sunday, I said, leave that one. You're anointed. Please, I was taking notes again. 
People, when people come back to anybody's church, say someone said he stabbed. I said, please leave that one. That may be the madness of the prophet, but you, you still have, uh, are you following what I'm saying? He saw me take one day, he, he, he saw me and he said, I gave you a long rope, I gave you a long rope. You are, when you get to the end of the rope, I was taking my notes. If the man sees me today, he will say, I know why he got where he got. Nobody can touch again, you shout. Instagram life. On <laughs> small discipline. Are you following what I'm saying here? And even for ministers, it's a test. Because Saul, David, sorry, Saul, when he lost the kingdom, it's because he didn't want to dis- he didn't want to displease people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And God says you have to make a choice. Yes. Either you're popular with them yeah. or you obey me. And you come to crossroads in your life where people will turn their back if you don't do what we want you to do. Yeah. And you say, please turn your back because I'm going to stay with God. Oh, yeah. Jesus did that in his ministry. Yeah. He said, he even looked at the other 12. He said, Are you two want to go? Because we are preaching everything user friendly now that pastors are being controlled by congregation. Yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying? So, Isaiah 42, let's bring this to an end. Verse 8. He says, I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And one of the reasons why you experience death is that when God wants to do what he wants to do, it must be clear. Is he that did it. Do you understand what I'm saying? The people that will have taken the glory, he says, get out of that life. Now you got tired. <laughs> They're living this is most important person. He says, this is how it's going to happen. Behold, the former things that come to pass. New things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Then what did he say next? What are you not supposed to do? Sing unto the Lord a new song. Let his praise go from the ends of that. Ye that go down to the sea and all ye that therein, and the altar inhabitants thereof. He says, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. Let them sing. Let them shout. He now says this. Next verse. He says, let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise. Next verse. He says, the Lord shall go forth. You see, once that praise begins to come, then God starts going forth. You know, in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, I believe verse 22, he says, As, and when they began to sing, 2 Chronicles 20, 22, God set an ambushment. And when they began to sing, when they began to sing, God set. In other words, when does God start moving on the outside? When praise has come out. Please, this praise has never failed the human history to walk. But it is not the praise that is a result of your favorite song. It's not the praise because you like the guest artist. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not the praise because the instruments sound right. It's a praise that is coming as a result of the revelation God gave to you. Psalm 119 verse 77 Message translation. This is the praise that works. Psalm 119 verse 77. Message translation. He says, I dance to the tune of your revelation. Verse, no, message translation. Now comfort me so I can live. Really live. Your revelation is the tune I dance to. Which means when I'm dancing, is that revelation. Now, Go on in Isaiah 42. I want to show something here. This is what I want you to see. The end of this. Isaiah 42, where we stopped. This is what I want you to see. Okay, no, go on, go on, go on. No, no, no. No, no, verse, go to verse 12. All right, uh, glory to God, declare praise to our land. Then he says this, next verse. The Lord shall go, he shall cry, he shall prevail against enemies. Verse 14. 
I have long time holding my peace. I've been still. I've revealed myself. Now I will cry because the song came. I will devour at once. Next verse. I will make waste mountains hills. That's power. Next verse. He said, I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. And I will lead them in paths they have not known. See. Once you start praising. So let me just give an example of that pastor who 200 he went to 87 he exchanged it after some time no emotions again he has put on the garment of praise he starts praising God God will lead him by a path bring him which means he's blinded to what will take that church to 500 so God will bring by blind by a way he knew not and he will lead them in paths they have not known which means he's going to show him. He can't copy another person. God will show him what to do. Yes. See, I'm about to bring this to an end. Isaiah 38. Remember Hezekiah, verse 1. You know God came and told him, you are dead. Isn't that what God said? Yeah. Isaiah 38, 1. Put up the scripture. And Isaiah, uh, Hezekiah prayed. All right? For thou shalt die and not live. And Hezekiah turned his face. Now, next verse. And he face and prayed. Verse 3. And remember this. By verse 4. God heard the prayer. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, all right, go to Hezekiah and say unto him, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. I will add what? 15 years. That's the remark he gave him. Huh? Yeah. How did he activate it? Go to verse 20. Verse 20, because of time. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs to string instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Look at the consequence of it. Next verse. For Isaiah said, let them take a lump of figs, lay it for a plaster upon the boy, and he shall recover. God told him as a promise, 15 years, but there's a strategy yeah. of taking a lump of figs and laying it as a plaster for the manifestation. God says, I will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In a marriage feast where the wine has finished, there's a strategy. Fill the pots with water. It's when you start praising, your eyes are open to that way you haven't seen. Do you get what I'm saying here? God opens your eyes, do this. And what happens? He says, who is as blind as my messenger and as deaf as my servant? See many things, which means it is just something you will see. It's a conversation. People are having a conversation and you just heard it. That's what you should do. This is not scripture again. This is practical. Do you get what I'm saying here? This is tactical. This is where God says, do it like this. You've come from the scripture that he gave you now. You are now getting so the tactics there. And let me tell you, the worst experience in this world is to be blinded as to what you should do. Because you will labor. You know the hardest thing to find is when you are looking for something and you don't know it's in your pocket. There is no way you won't look. Yeah. There is no, can you imagine, this is covered. It happened to me recently. I was looking for my wristwatch, it was covered. I looked, I said, where did I forget the wristwatch? Because it was so light, I didn't know I was going. I said, where did I forget this? Look, look. To look for, to find something that is next to you is difficult. The Bible tells us that when those men came into Sodom and Gomorrah, all right, they were at the door when the angels struck them with blindness. And the Bible says, they wearied themselves from morning to evening to find the word door. Wow. But they were right there. In other words, the strategy to make everything work is right before you. Right? That's to make everything work. That strategy is right before you. But God has to open your eyes to see it. You know, when one time I, I, I was, tra- uh, was going back to Lagos, so at Heathrow Airport, I just wanted to see. If you say there's no way, it's you saying there's no way. It's not God. Yeah. There's always a way. So we are living at Terminal C, um, sorry, Gate C in Terminal 5. So you have to take a train from gate A to gate C. Or in gate B, but back then I used to um, drink coffee and I, I would put hazelnuts. So I used to buy it in Starbucks. 
So I, I realized that in gate B was where the Starbucks was for me to buy it. So this time I was going, I now got to gate B. So the train was going to gate C. I said, let me get down by gate B. Then I'll get back on the train to gate C. And they are still calling the flight. So when I got to gate B, I bought it. Only to get to the train, only to realize that you can't enter again that way. You have to go back to arrival. Go through immigration, stand on the queue. And they were already calling final call. I have to wait for the train, go back, then go through security, then come back on the train. I looked at myself. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> and I had a meeting the next day in Lagos. Everything flashed. So I looked by those another gentleman, I think it was an Indian chap, he stood there. One man just came out from an office. He said, what's the problem, guys? I said this. He said, there's a door over there. Walk through that door. Go down the staircase. You get to a tunnel. Walk. You get to gate C. I opened the door. I realized that it was underground. This was reserved for either fire or terrorism in Heathrow, which was a massive tunnel. Ma that thing was almost twice the size of this. It and you just walk away, just hearing that sound. God told me. He said, when you can't see, I have hidden tunnels. Do you get what I'm saying here? When you say there's no way out, I have doors. I have, he says, and I have this thing in multiple forms. That you have a sentence of death on yourself and say it's over. Doesn't mean anything is over. Do you get what I'm saying? When you start praising, I will show you one of them. Yeah, many ways you could have gotten healed. So just take this, put it on it, and you'll do that. I know what happens to many people. Tell me what to do to happen. God doesn't, re God doesn't repeat the strategy twice. So you two take a plaster and you put it. Are you following what I'm saying? But death is at work here. I do it with discouragement. I, I, you, you go there, say So, get the revelation, do the exchange, enter into praise, you see what is happening. When you start praising, if it is a power problem, then power is released. If it's a wisdom problem, wisdom is released. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? Wisdom is released. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this entire congregation, pray for this church. As your word has been sown and seeds have been sown in here, let Envoy Nation be in a community that the Spirit works in an unhindered way, Amen. bringing forth fruit that the entire city of Leicester will come to partake of it. Anybody who has a need in this city will know that if I come through the doors of Envoy Nation, I will receive the answers to my prayers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all.